Hello everyone and welcome back to another figure opening video today. Today we're going to be opening up the Hatsune Miku Rascal figure that came out probably about a month ago. I was really surprised to see this. I wasn't expecting to see this figure in any game center or any of the shops recently. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a thing now. Um, I should highlight, and I checked with my wife because I'm not too sure myself, Rascal was an old Japanese animation show. This character here doesn't really talk in the show, but it's pretty, pretty famous in Japan. So uh, maybe I'll have a bit of watching to do. But anyway, there's a ton of stuff going on here. So let's get straight into looking at the box. So up here we have our Hatsune Miku logo and Rascal. And what I love about this is Miku's mic has gone onto Rascal and actually the Tanuki tail has actually gone onto the Hatsune Miku. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, over here, that's oh, right, let me just turn that around. We have a age warning, Furu and Jaya Prize logos. So again, a few things there. And here we have Miku in the middle and there is a ton of stuff going on here. I mean, look at that hat, that looks so cool. Um, but Miku basically takes up the whole front. There is also this nice kind of pattern in the background and a nice gold outline here to show that this is the frame. And then down here we have the special figure Hatsune Miku and Rascal special figure. Don't know why they repeat themselves a ton of times. Special figure, special figure. Um, but there you go. But wow, very, very busy front here. On the side over here, again, we have the same logo here with special figure Hatsune Miku and Rascal. And a wonderful, wonderful piece of art here. We will come to that in a second because it's actually on the other side too. Then on the back here, we have a lot of safety information. Again, with the Miku figure off to one side. And there's just a ton of text here. But this is where I want to focus on. Art by Tama. Now we're going to go to the other side. So Tama is the person that made this beautiful art piece here. So I will leave a link at the bottom so you can go check out their art. Please do. I'll also put their Twitter handle below so you can definitely go and check out their Twitter art. Um, I'm assuming they have a Twitter. <laughs> Hopefully they do. So uh, yeah, very pretty. Look at that. Look how cool that is. God, I wish I could art that good. Um, but anyway, <laughs> at the bottom down here, we just have Hatsune Miku and Rascal just plain text in the middle. And that's kind of cool. I think that's nice. And on the top, we have the exact same thing and the lighting above me. Ooh. Uh, anyway, I'm very tired. It's been a very busy couple of months. Let's get this figure open. Okay, and back in with the knife. So yeah, apologies if I haven't had many of these figure openings come out as regularly as they used to. I liked to try and get at least one out a week, but I've just been so busy with work, I have not had a chance to stop. This is the first weekend in a little while that I've actually had a bit of time, so uh, woo, <laughs> we can open some figures. But anyway, enough about me, back to the figure. Here we go. Ow, that hurt, can't get in there. There we go, all right. So, there's not really much information here. And a huge waste of space. Look at that, what is the point? That's not even half of the figure space here. Why? I understand the reasoning behind it. If the figure's gonna be like this in the game center, they want the weight at the bottom. If it falls over to one side, it might be easier to win. Maybe that's good information for people to know if they're playing on Treba or if they're going to be in Japan. But, uh, oh, it's so sad. All right, here we go. And uh, this nothingness can go over here. Ooh. Okay, so everything is nice, nice and neatly wrapped in some bubble wrap. Um, wow, there's a lot, jeez. There's a figure, some hair, tanuki, and a stand. All right, this is gonna take a bit of time to unwrap, so give me a moment and I'll be back with you soon. Okay, and our stand. And here is our stand. And it's very much like the EXQ figures. It's just a plain white stand. It's round, it's quite deep. It's probably about a centimeter deep. Uh, sorry if that was a really weird cut. The train went by suddenly and it just interrupted everything. Um, but we're still on the back here. As you can see, we have art by Tama. We have the Krypton Future Media Inc. Nippon Animation Co. LTD. And this one especially is quite important this time because this is actually the owner of Rascal, the TV series. Now I did want to show you a few clips of this, but it's probably copyrighted, so I probably won't. Um, so uh, yeah, apologies for that. Just search Rascal online, you'll find it easily. 
But something interesting about this stand is that the hole, the tiny, tiny hole, is like a basic kind of L block. I mean, that's so small. Look, look how tiny that is. I mean, it just feels kind of wasted space. And I'm really hoping that the figure can actually stand with such a small hole there. So we're going to find out. But anyway, not really much going on here. Okay, and here is our figure herself. And she's so small that the focus is really having a hard time to find her. Come on camera, you can do it. I believe you. Maybe this might need a bit of manual work here. There we go. God, that was tough. <laughs> but wow, this is actually super, super pretty. And it's so much smaller than most other figures. It actually is 17 centimeters. And yeah, it's really light, like super, super light. Now this also comes with two separate pieces of hair here. So we do have to put them in. One of them has a kind of T. So we're gonna put that in over here. And I believe that's right there. So um, maybe I'm wrong. Let's try that again. There we go. And there's a nice little squeak there. So we got that one in. And then over here, we have a little bit more of an open shape here. Uh, so we're gonna just push this in like this. And uh, there we go. And oh, even better, much, much nicer. Okay, let's kick things off by taking a look at her face. So as we can see, she has one eye open with a ton of detail there, some nice blusher at the top and the bottom of her eye. And over here we have one eye closed. Again, this is kind of cool. Now separately, if there was just one eye like that, or if there's one eye like this, it looks kind of cool. But like this, it looks really kind of creepy. <laughs> It just seems a little bit lower. Now I've pointed that out, maybe you cannot unsee that. Oh, the hair fell out too. Well, that wasn't a very good uh, start, was it? Well, that really doesn't hold very well, actually. That's a bit of a flaw. We'll come to that in a second. Um, but we can also see that her nose sticks out a tiny bit and her mouth is agape. There is some teeth at the top there and it looks super, super cute with a wonderful smile. So very nice. Her hair comes down in multiple little strands here. There's a ton of strands going on kind of off in different angles. And there's also this nice kind of lighter turquoise to a darker kind of green color. So it's very, very pretty. We can also see over here, she has a pink and black bow in her hair. And then the hair comes down in multiple strands. And again, this has a nice few curls to it. There's a nice curl at the back there. There's a few kind of spinny, wavy curls over here. There's also a few lines that we can also see. So it's pretty cool. And then over on the other side, we have this piece of hair that just keeps coming out. It's super loose. Actually, I'm really disappointed with that. There's no really kind of set structure for this hair piece. So uh, yeah, we're just going with a hole here. So if this falls out a few times in today's video, I do apologize. Um, but there's actually a tiny little black bit there, which is kind of separating the hair from the head. And again, this comes down in a few nice little strands, again, with that kind of curliness to it. And again, it comes down from a darker color into a lighter color. So a little bit opposite to her face or the hair up here. So. Uh, yeah, kind of interesting. And then at the back, we can also see that her hair is split off into two halves, again, with that nice kind of shading, much lighter at the top, going to darker at the bottom. Moving a little bit further up the head, we can see that she's holding onto a black top hat. And this top hat is so cool. It has this wonderful kind of blue and pink feather coming out. It's got this nice kind of little ruffled thing going on here. I would have no idea what you would call this, but uh, it's very, very pretty. And I love these colors. Look how beautiful that is. And it also has this nice kind of gold trim going all the way around the outside. One other cool part about this actually is it's hollow inside. So you can actually put your finger in there if you wanted to. Don't know why you'd want to, but there you go. <laughs> but yeah, wonderful top half to her head. All right, let's move down her body. Okay, so we could see that she's wearing this white kind of ruffled under top here. And this is actually connected directly to her neck and it actually straps all the way around to the back. So it's very, very tight fitting. Wouldn't know how you'd even get into that. Um, but the pattern itself is really cool. It's got this nice physical ruffles going down the figure a bit there. Wow, the hand actually moves, that's kind of cool. Um, she also has this bow in the middle here with a nice kind of Miku green and black. Um, and again, this has a nice few kind of folds and ruffles to it as well. So very pretty. There is also this kind of gold trim here in the middle, so that's also just adds a little bit of extra detail. You can see that her shoulders are bare here because this kind of outfit, I'm guessing this kind of circus-y outfit with the one strap here connecting it. Again, that's really cool. It's very nicely detailed. Um, it's not really sitting on her shoulders, so that's kind of a shame. 
but it does also have a nice kind of golden trim on the outside and again at the back we can see this golden trim too. We can actually see the colour a little bit better here because we can see there's black in the centre with a little bit of red on the outside so a nice kind of colour system going on here. That's very pretty. We can also see that she's wearing these white gloves and these have a nice kind of jagged so like kind of edge to them. I'm guessing in real life, well, if this was real, these would be much softer, but they're actually a bit sharp, so do be careful. And we can also see that her hands, the fingers haven't been molded separately by themselves, but we do have a few bumps to highlight where the fingers would be. On the other hand, however, we do have one finger sticking out, actually holding onto her top hat, kind of having that kind of like nice milady kind of look to it. Um, well, maybe she's actually a neckbeard. <laughs> Uh, no, she could never be one of those. Um, but it's the same glove here, so yeah, the gloves are nice as well. Moving down, we can actually see that she has this gorgeous, gorgeous black skirt with these white kind of ruffle around the outside. And again, this has a nice textured pattern to it. This has a lot of textures going on. There's actually a nice texture up here, lovely down here, so it's pretty cool. We have this theme of the turquoise and red going on again with these bows, and these are nice opposites. But one thing I like about this is that it's red on the kind of side over here going on to the center and the same over here. So these are actually complete opposites. So very nicely thought out. We have a few golden kind of dots here and also there's her belly button. So that's there as well if you wanted to see that. <laughs> oh, there goes the hair again. So we're back down to one piece, one second. Okay, sorry about that. Her hair did fall out there. Maybe I should keep a little counter at the bottom the amount of times that her hair falls out. And if it becomes too much, I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> Um, continuing with her skirt though, we do have a lot of very big folds going on here, so very nicely detailed. And that's the same at the back with a little bit of a flick kind of coming off here, so pretty cool. And moving down her legs just a little bit here, we can actually see that there are these really, really long kind of knee-high stockings or boots. No, these are stockings, these are definitely stockings. Uh, these have a wonderful golden trim at the top. And again, they have the turquoise on the outside. Again, these are two complete opposites with a nice white on the inside. And we can also see there's a few kind of holes here. These are diagonal holes just to kind of show where her legs are. So a nice kind of pattern there. And then moving even further down, sorry, my hand is kind of in the way there. Uh, we can see that she has a bow on the back of her shoe, which is awesome. Very, very pretty. And the shoe itself is actually strapped onto the ankle and the rest of the body. And the lighting here is really tough to kind of get a good view. The shoe itself is very, very plain, but it has a nice shine to it, so it's pretty cool. Oh, that's a third time. Uh, I give up. Just going to leave that there now. That's become a huge pain now. Um, so yeah, it's cool. And then it's kind of the same thing over here, just without the little stand bit. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. But yeah, this is a wonderful, wonderful figure, minus the detrimental hair problems that are going on. It's actually super annoying. And I'm not going to touch that now. We're just going to review it like this because uh, it's already become a little bit too much. Okay, because this is a figure with a skirt on, we are going to have a quick pan shot. So if you don't want to stay here for that weird perverted part, please do skip to the time where the hair is down here. Um, because, yeah, the hair is kind of just there. But anyway, let's have a look. So as we can see, the pants, there is not much really going on there. Um, we can actually see a nice kind of frill going on inside, nice kind of like lines and patterns going on inside the skirt. But for the pants, there's not really much to talk about um, because there's so little to see. That's exactly the same at the front, if we can even get an angle on the front. Um, yeah, we really can't, can we? Um, but yeah, there are pants. So uh, there you go. Kind of interesting. Okay. Right, let's get rid of that. <laughs> okay, welcome back to all of you sane people that did actually skip to the time at the bottom. Now, I wanna get this in the stand and I do wanna get that piece of hair in, so give me one second. And here she is in her stand. And wow, this is actually very, very pretty. I must say, I'm impressed at how well the figure is actually holding inside that tiny little hole. Um, so yeah, that's pretty, <laughs> pretty impressive. And we did also put that piece of hair in again. It's probably gonna fall out again. And again, I'm so disappointed with that. It's just, it's so hard to review anything when all the hair keeps falling out, so. Uh, yeah, not fun, not fun. But anyway, let me give you all a few pretty shots of this really, really pretty Miku. One second. Okay, so you might see that actually something is missing here. 
Can Eddie Moddy tell me what it is? Yeah, that's right, we are missing our rascal. And look how cute he is! Or she! I'm not gonna find out. I don't know what gender this is. Look how cute it is! <laughs> it's so cute. It has the same top hat as Mikuon. Tail is adorable. From behind, we can all see that it also has the same golden rim on the top hat, and the tail we can see in a little bit more detail. Super, super cute. So pretty! <laughs> But we've actually got to get this rascal into here and I'm hoping that the arm will kind of hold out a little bit. <gasps> it's even better! Oh my god, look at that! That's so cute! Oh, I love this! Okay, okay, you've kind of redeemed yourself uh, here, Miku. I was kind of ashamed with your hair, but you took everything back with uh, that little addition. So, uh, very, very pretty. Um, if we could focus, that would also be nice. Thank you, Miku! Okay, now let's have a few real pretty shots of this figure and Rasko. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's put you on the shelf. And today we're actually gonna be returning back to our original shelf. And she's gonna stand over here next to Miss Madoka. And wow, look how pretty she is. God, that's such a stunning figure. Now, I do recommend getting her because she is very pretty. If you get a bit of glue, you could probably stick in her hair, no problem, so it doesn't fall out. And hey, everyone, I really must apologize if this video doesn't look so good today. Honestly, the train kept going past. I had to keep cutting and recutting and recutting. And again, sorry if I seem stressed, it's bloody hot. It's like 37 degrees today in Japan. And this room doesn't have an air conditioner. But enough about my personal woes. This is great. Definitely pick it up. Look at that face. If it will focus. Anyway, love you all. And I will see you all in the next figure opening video coming very, very soon. Okay, bye.